Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio. It's time to start the second part of this two part video series about preparing my shop for the next project. In the last video series, I showed you how I cleaned up the shop, put the old jigs and parts away to help me build the last project, and now it's time to prepare the shop for the next project. And I like to start where everything starts at the beginning. And for me, that's here at my Felder Hammer A331 combination machine. So it sheaths both a jointer, 12 inches wide, and a planer, which is 12 inches wide as well. The first thing I like to do when I come over here is to clean. This is what I use to clean the top. It's great for cleaning the surfaces and it's great for cleaning blades and router bits. So let's get started. The first thing I do is I take the wheels for the base, put them underneath, and I need to pull the jointer away from the wall. So um, there's a bunch of stuff on here. And now that it's clean, I'm gonna spray the, both of the in-feed and out-feed tables as well as the fence. Once that's had some time to settle in, and soak in, it's time to just wipe everything down. Look how much stuff it's picking up. Take a look at that. Just on the cutter head alone. Now that I've done a first pass, I think it's time to do a second pass because this is pretty dirty. While I'm here, I'm gonna bring the fence in and check that it's square in both the front and the back. Now the part that really matters the most is everything from about here to here, where you're really applying your pressure on the fence as you're passing a piece by while you're jointing an edge. So to do this, I like to use a feeler gauge and uh, see if I can pass through or not and um, I'm not able to pass through. Now I'm gonna give the top a little bit of time to dry off completely before I put wax on it. While that's happening, let's open this guy up. The first thing I'm gonna do is to clean up the surfaces around the feed rollers. The next thing I wanna do is to take off the covers for the feed rollers, and I want to clean the feed rollers. Now to get to the bottom of this feed roller, what I need to do is to take the cover here, flip it over, and come from underneath. Let me show you what it takes to change out the blades on this Hammer A331. First, you need a tool like this, which comes with the jointer planer, and um, you do this. Then as you can see, there's little dots all throughout the length of this blade. And this is indexing the blade into the holder. And the um, blade just simply comes off. The blade itself, when you buy them, they have two sides. I cleaned the blade that was in. I've only used one side of the blade. I'm gonna use the other side now since they are double-sided, which is really nice. And you get that just pushed in so it indexes against all of those holes right here. And you start to screw these guys back in. Just a little bit of pressure at a time. Tighten everything back up and move on to the other three. Now once I get everything in, I just take a couple extra seconds to make sure I've cleaned everything off the cutter head. With the blades changed out, I'm gonna bring the table down and now I'm gonna wax the surface of the feed and out feed table. And once that's had a few minutes to set in, then I'm just going to buff it back and forth. Now this guy's back in the planer mode. Uh, what I'm gonna do is the exact same thing I did to the tables and feed and out feed table for the planer table here. Now what I do next really depends on what was used in the project. Now in this Gamble House rocking chair, the bandsaw was used a lot. And what I'm gonna do is elevate the entire blade guard and slowly by hand pull the blade through and clean off all the teeth. After spraying the blade and allowing the stuff to sit for a little bit, I come back with a brass bristle brush and clean up 
this blade. Now this is a Restock King blade, which means it's got carbide tip teeth and it's sharpenable. And this just helps me keep it uh, sharp longer or usable longer in between sharpenings. When I do the test to see if the blade is square to the table, I again use one of these feeler gauges. This is the 0 .0015 inches feeler gauge. And I just take this guy, set it up. There you go, I can't get through. By now I'm guessing you know the drill. I'm gonna take the crosscut sled off, set that aside, first clean the tabletop, and pull out this blade. This blade here has been used for an entire project, plus probably ripping a few things for Elizabeth, which means it's pretty dirty. It's gonna come out, get cleaned, and get replaced with a new blade that is sharp, and I will clean this one, and it will replace this next blade after the, this next project is finished. Now there's a little bit of buildup on my riving knife. So uh, I'm gonna work on getting this off as well. Let it sit for a second. And then the buildup just comes right off the riving knife. And now time for the wax. Don't forget to get the miter slots. Let the wax sit for a few minutes and then buff it out. The next thing I do is I want to make sure the blade is squared to the table. And to do that, I bring up my Inkra Guaranteed Square and I put it just between two teeth. And with it between two teeth, I will then take a feeler gauge. I can get through on the bottom, but I can't get through on the top. Let me move the blade and see if that's just part of where the blade is right there. Sure enough, I can get through at the bottom. So that means I'm slightly out of square. So let's see if we can get this fixed. Okay, I moved the blade a little bit. Let's try it out again. Okay, let's move the blade somewhere. Give it another shot. There you go. So all I did right there was I moved the blade just a little bit off of 90, came back to my preset for 90 and tested the blade out. And everything worked really great. Now, two projects ago, I reset the, the preset for 90 back to the real 90 and got that thing all set up because I had moved over the course of you know maybe half a year or a year. So every once in a while, you just gotta double check that. Make sure those presets are exactly what they're supposed to be. And everybody saw they're in different locations. For me, the screws are here at the front and then there's another guy here in the back. The next thing to do is to bring the crosscut sled back up and to check to make sure it is square to the blade. But before, actually, before I do that, what I should do is bring the fence over. This is something that I think a lot of people may have missed but I like to do it all the time is to make sure my fence is 90 to the table. So just like everything else, a feeler gauge at 0 0.0015 inches. And sure enough, I'm good. Again, a couple projects ago, I reset all of this on Instagram. I think I put little videos up where I was making sure the blade was 90 and the fence was 90 as well. And at the same time, when I did all that work, I also made sure that the miter gauge and the fence or square to the blade. Before I set this guy back down, I wanna take a look at the bottom. And I haven't done that in a while. And uh, there's some stuff on here. Just make sure that there's nothing that's stuck on the bottom of my sled that's going to change its characteristics. So a piece of a shaving or anything else like that. Wanna make sure everything glides nicely, but doesn't move back and forth, which it doesn't right now. So that's great. Let's go check the blade to the fence squareness. So what I like to do in this situation is to make sure that this guy is set to zero or 90, bring up the guaranteed square to the edge, and again with a feeler gauge, see if I can get through. And I can't. So to me, 
that says this is at 90 degrees. So those are the three major power tools in my shop. My saw stop contractor saw, my hammer joint or planer combo machine, and my Laguna 14 SUV band saw. Now, the next steps I will do after this is to sharpen some chisel blades as well as my plane blades. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys that because I've done a video on that already. So I'm gonna have a link right over here to that video and I'm also gonna have another link right over here in the cards to the video where I show you a quick tip on how to sharpen spoke shave blades by hand. If you have any questions or comments about anything in this video, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll have links in the description to the products that I used. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please share with your friends, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're watching this on Facebook, please hit the like button, share it on your timeline, and go over and like my page, MM Wood Studio, on Facebook. And have a great week in the shop.